what's out there. Well, hey, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few days away from early access if you bought premium. Otherwise, it's September the 6th for the standard edition release. So get ready to jump into your start of game default loadout ship, strap on your seat harnesses, pour yourself a beverage, power up the thrusters and be ready for an experience like no other as you journey across the stars in style. So whether it's the ground and aerial combat you seek, or stealth looting and smuggling you desire, or maybe you just simply wish to uncover the many secrets of the universe that this game has daringly sought to provide, in what sounds like a very lengthy story with an insanely intriguing overdose of side exploration. Wow, are you excited? I know I am. In fact, I just got so hyped during the intro that I almost forgot I do have my reservations about the game, and I would definitely express those in just a bit. But for now, I feel like there are just as many reasons to be excited for the game as there are star systems to visit as we play. So with the internet ablaze with interviews, presentations and pretty much just non-stop information overload on what to expect, how to play and numerous deep dives into a game that isn't even out yet. I'm just going to keep it simple and chill for you folks because I'm a fan, you're a fan so let's just geek out and talk about what we do know for sure and what to expect and on an emotional level what we hardcore gamers want and quite frankly deserve from a game like Starfield. Firstly, every bit of footage released for this game is very awe-inspiring for me. All the hard work and sheer dedication from the Bethesda team under the leadership of Todd Howard are all on display here within the visuals and music of the trailers and gameplay footage. As somebody who constantly ponders about the universe and its unimaginable magnitude, I cannot help but be drawn into fantastic sci-fi stories which thankfully exist in many mediums such as film and games, so assuming that the story will be as captivating as the game looks, we could be in for a real treat. So how will it begin? Well, Bethesda certainly knows how to kick off a game intro. One of the coolest introductions to a game that I can remember was the beginning of Skyrim. It was just the way you were thrust into a new world that allowed you enough time to get a feel for your surroundings and learn what you needed to know before tackling your first fight or making your first critical choice. From what we know of Starfield's opening act, it will be no different. Without spoiling too much for those who wish to remain unspoiled, by all accounts you begin your first day deep down in a mine, mining for what? Who knows, but alas you discover something else deep down in the murky depths. No, not a Balrog, thank the heavens, but rather something of extreme value that will signify a pivotal moment for your character and the journey you are about to embark. The rest of the opening scene will swiftly entail the character creation of course, and all the fun that comes with it, or if you're anything like me, painstaking hours spent turning simple decisions into overly complicated ones, and then being left with doubt throughout the rest of the game that I might have made the wrong decisions either with choosing my starting perks or creating my backstory. But for some reason I've always loved the beginning of any game the most. Maybe it's because you start with nothing, the bare essentials and have to rise against all odds to carve a place in this current world you are fictionally playing in. Here in Starfield you will no doubt start with some basic clothes, at least I hope, a default low grade weapon and possibly some odds and sods in your inventory. You will also own, or possibly acquire, a starting ship. Most likely this ship will hopefully be the bare minimum this game has to offer and hence the quest begins to earn and acquire all the unlocks, components and cash needed to build an absolute beast or monstrosity of a ship and then be able to add your screenshots to the never ending forums of custom ship images online. See I told you this game was going to be exciting. But on a serious note, what we have known as gamers for some time and what we recently witnessed with the launch of Baldur's Gate 3 is that we relish more and more choices in games, especially open world RPG games. When we get the ability to make more decisions whether it be to side with or against any NPC like in Baldur's Gate, or to construct an entire ship from hundreds of components into any shape we like, as is the case with Starfield. Well this just makes me a very happy gamer indeed, so I look forward to spending hours using the in-game design tool to build my dream ship, or most likely steal someone else's brilliant idea and then bring it to life as I proudly fly it through the cosmos, battling foes and shamelessly showing off someone else's magnificent ship design. 
We recently had the pleasure of hearing Starfield's devs boast about spending over 160 hours of playing the game and not even coming close to finishing up on main quests, as well as many side quests and areas of exploration. I was initially thrilled to hear this as I do love me a long game, but I did have to wonder as to some of the reasons why devs play their own games uh, during development in the first place, if not simply to test and look for bugs rather than steam ahead with the story. But I'm not going to argue with myself on that and I'm pretty certain that Starfield will be immensely vast in story, exploration and overall scope. So although only a crazy mentalist would actually visit all 1000 plus planets, most of which will be procedurally generated by the way, I do hope there is enough incentive to always feel the need to touch down on both inhabited and uninhabited planets we encounter. We know that harvesting resources are a key factor in Starfield as it should be in any respectable RPG, but I sincerely wish that most planets, even the celestial bodies that identify as procedurally generated, will also harbour unique items and secrets other than just mining materials and flora, or fleshy bits and bobs harvested from fauna. But it's nice to know that every planet will be unique in any case. The only issue here that I feel could bring on a migraine is the fault of navigating the star map to suss out where you want to go and where you've already been. The maps they've shown us of the solar systems are glorious and easy to view, but I do wonder about how complicated it will get when trying to view all 100 star systems and remembering where you've stashed all your gold. I'm pretty sure, however, that the Pathista devs are smarter than me and have problem solved this predicament already by placing intuitive markers and assisting mechanics within the interactive maps. However, back to the solar system images we see in the footage, we recently learned that every planet will have varying degrees of gravity based on the mass of the central sun. If you look closely, you can actually see the fabric of space represented in a grid of lines being distorted by the sun's gravitational forces. That's a pretty cool scientific touch, I think, as well as a visually appealing way of understanding what kind of experience you're going to have on each planet. Just remember to upgrade your jetpacks for those planets with high gravity, though. One of the many joys I get from these types of long format games that really allow you to sink hours and live in the world are all the ways to increase one's wealth. My experiences of playing The Witcher 3 and Red Dead Redemption 2 were that of a greedy money-grabbing hoarder, I wasn't truly happy unless I was selling trinkets I'd stolen, or harvesting rare materials to create the most expensive and unique items on the market. So I do hope that Starfield affords us many opportunities to not only grind ourselves silly in stealing, harvesting or salvaging to earn an epic amount of in-game currency, but I hope the game also stocks many ridiculously rare and overpriced items such as gear or ship parts that can only be obtained through dozens and dozens of hours of gameplay. We know that the morality system in Starfield will be far richer with way more choice matters and counters than any of their previous titles. I'm interested to see how much of this will tie in with our opportunity to earn and gain power. Most games morality mechanics fall into two basic categories, get rich and gain better loot equals the evil path, or less rewards but more altruistic actions towards NPCs equals better story outcome. Some other quick mentions are the stealth playstyle. I've loved stealth ever since I used to play Thief as a kid by Looking Glass Studios, back in the golden days of gaming. Skyrim was never quite my cup of tea when it came to stealth because it was very level based and eventually you could just crouch anywhere and not be seen, lol. The few snippets of silent takedowns we have been privy to do look promising however. The target was facing the other direction, check. Crouching makes less noise, check. There you have it, we might actually have a realistic stealth system going on in Starfield. One of my reservations for this game was the combat, if I'm honest. It all looks a little clunky, much in the same way that cyberpunk combat appears. I realise these games are always going to feel a little bit better when you're actually playing rather than watching someone else play or watching alpha footage. And also, these big games are never going to recreate the first-person shooter smoothness of, say, a game like Call of Duty. Nevertheless, that aspect of the game will remain a big question mark until I can try it out myself. I think what could for sure make combat a very fun and rewarding experience is to use the jetpack we keep seeing popping up in their marketing campaign. Not only will this cool feature be an excellent means of temporarily escaping gunfire or the sharp teeth of some crazed animal, 
But it will also be a lifesaver when the thought of traversing large landscapes becomes too painful to bear. The jetpack as well as other utilities thankfully will have a range of upgradable components that will allow for better height traversal, for getting to those extremely high places, as well as achieving a softer fall when coming down. So a few things that kind of set this game apart from other open world RPGs is the ability we spoke earlier about, and that is to customise your ship or even build one from scratch. But two other exciting things to look forward to is the capability to steal enemy ships and stow them away as part of your fleet. At first I for some reason just assumed this meant you could fly around as a fleet altogether, but I quickly realised that would be a little daft and overpowered in a single player RPG. However, it is a fantastic idea that we can keep a shipyard full of some of the best vessels we can find on our journey, stolen or borrowed. The other worthy mention is the base or outpost building. I've always loved base building, in fact I get so OCD about how it must look and function that most of my gaming friends never want to play multiplayer games with me for <laughs> this very reason. I do remain a bit hesitant as to how crucial building outposts will be in Starfield. Is it the case that once you've built one, there's no point in building any more? I mean, if you can warp drive to anywhere in the galaxy, then why build any more, right? You just go back to the same place where you have your main outpost. We'll have to wait to find out any more on this, but let me know in the comments if you'll be making a home on every main story planet you visit or not. The Vice President of Bethesda, Pete Hines, has been gushing about the irresponsible size and scale of Starfield quite a lot recently, but one of the things he said that caught my attention was when he spoke about the side missions and how important they are to take on as they fundamentally offer very rich story elements and new opportunities. It's also worth remembering that because much of the game is procedurally generated and is actually based in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, using real star positional data, one player's visit to Mars or Pluto will look very different to another player's, so each person's visit to any number of planets to complete side missions will be incredibly unique because of the randomly generated landscapes. It's also fun knowing that every time you replay the game, not much will look the same as it did before. Maybe the biggest question I have is what will the theme of the game really be about, and what will be revealed at the end of the story? Paglia Rulo, the lead designer on Starfield, said that working on a story had actually changed his religious beliefs back and forth. I mean, that's a bit strange to hear, but at least it sounds like they've poured their hearts into creating a story that will make us think about the existence of the universe, perhaps. God, nature, simulation, whatever you think about the universe and life may either sync with this game or clash with it. Super intriguing to me. Lastly, it's been confirmed that the New Game Plus will be unlike any other game on the market, and very much tied to how you finish the main quest line. I love hearing news like this because I'm one of those who always wants to start a New Game Plus, but when I get there I just end up playing something else instead, simply because I know it's going to be a repeat of what I just did. So if they are speaking about a New Game Plus having unique features applied to it based on what choices you made in the previous playthrough, it almost sounds like a continuation rather than simply starting over. I don't want to speculate too much more on fear of giving you guys the wrong info, but I just feel overall we should all be very excited for this game. So I hope you enjoyed my thoughts more than anything on Starfield, as I cannot wait to play this game soon. Please let me know your thoughts as always in the comments as I always respond to everyone and I'd love to know what you guys are looking forward to and what your fears are regarding this game. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.